Okay, we're gonna rewind. All right, hello, hello, and welcome to Creation Watch. Let's uh, have a Another peek into the wild world of uh, speculative claims about the origin of the universe that don't conform to the current scientific knowledge. We always uh, like to explore some crazy ideas here. Um, just some, some wild inferences people make from the natural world and religious bias and uh, priming, conditioning, indoctrinating. People uh, are not always uh, as credulous as they should be. And sometimes they're incred incredulous about things they shouldn't be. Uh, so it's a difficult process to try to break someone free of these ideas. However, they're potentially dangerous, especially when they overflow uh, into our... Uh, our culture and society and uh, legislation and government uh, decision-making. And this has been uh, very prevalent in this MAGA movement. There is a religious aspect to it where they think that Donald Trump is a, a bib like a biblical fig figure. He's, he's a, 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 a new church father, if you will. He is like a, on par with Abraham, David, and even Jesus to these people. It's, it gets quite disturbing, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll let these, uh, these MAGA people kind of break things down for you. Let me introduce you to somebody. This, where'd we go? There we are. This is the, uh, now is the time with a Mary Cruelly. Uh, she uh, refers she uh, refers to herself as doctor. I think she's a doctor of divinity or something like that. Uh, but she does interviews with right wing uh, wackadoos and makes some of the uh, most uh, asinine claims and bizarre. Implications. There's prophecy. There's uh, there's biblical interpretation. There's end time revelation going on among these people that none of us are privy to. But uh, this is punctuated uh, here with this Representative Joe Donald interview more than anything else. We're gonna pop in here about 20 minutes into the interview. This is the South Dakota representative uh, discussing. About Rushmore. Shoot. Hold on, I got it muted. Just a second. Let's let's go back back that back up. And, well, and uh, Joe, isn't it true from what I've heard that the land, the rock that they really put Mount Rushmore on with the four presidents, wasn't that um, a very sacred 
Native yeah. American so, rock. So if you look at a time lapse video of the tree growth and uh, over years in the Black Hills, I think you can find it online. But anyway, you'll see a beating human heart. That's what it looks like. And so a long time. A time lapse. A time lapse of the northern hemisphere. It looks like like if you if you take a satellite image of the Earth. A time lapse of it, uh, it'll breathe. It looks like the northern hemisphere breathes with the seasons. It's really cool, but uh, other uh, re it can be pinned down regionally too. Time ago, the, the belief was by uh, by many of the tribes is that that place was the most sacred place of the land because that was the heart of the land. And then, if you go about an hour and a half drive from there, you have the geodetic center of North America. And so they knew that and they used, and so center points are very important in God's kingdom, um, the way that God moves, um, reclaiming the center, reclaiming the beachhead, you know, and that's what the enemy does. He tries to go into the center of things and wreak havoc, he tries to go into the center of a life. The Holy Spirit goes down into the belly of us, into the center. So he's talking about that the uh, natives knew that this place in South. I'm not saying they didn't, that the, but they say he's saying these people knew that they're that the center of the North American continent was in South Dakota. Okay. Of us, and brings forth living water, and so I would say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What was that? The belly of us into the center of us, and brings forth living water and so that was weird i would say that just this is just the revelation that i've been working with is that so and just to be clear revelation is prophecy this is the prophecies that he that, that he as a a state representative is making is is using to help him decide how to legislate in his state kills of south dakota if god were ever to deal with the amount of witchcraft that's impacting our nation and, and, the, and the things that are happening from that location. If you didn't hear that. The amount of witchcraft that's impacting our nation. And, and the amount of witchcraft that is impacting our nation. So Representative Joe Donnell, who writes legislation for the state of South Dakota, who uh, ha holds voting power in the state Senate in South Dakota. I think it's state Senate, right? Representative Joe Donnell is, is aff uh, affirming that witchcraft is channeled through the Black Hills. Let's let him... Let's let him Black say Black Hills it. of South Dakota... If God were ever to deal with the amount of witchcraft that's impacting our nation and, and, the, and the things that are happening in that location, we would see a major takeover of righteousness. But um, just to... Well, wasn't also, wasn't the guy who helped build that or whatever, wasn't, I had heard something. Yeah, this it, 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 so... Freemason. so uh, Freemason. So if you go back and do some history on Mount Rushmore, it actually is a Freemason shrine. It was called a shrine all the way in the back in the newspapers. It was said it was spoken about for what it was. Um, just like it is a shrine. It's a shrine to um, to our white culture's dominance over the North American continent. Basically, it's like. Uh, hey, people who lived here before, um, these white guys are our, your, your gods now. These four white guys. Uh, some, uh, I think uh, two of them owned slaves. Yeah. Anyway. Like Crazy Horse Mountain. The guy who did that was a mason as well. And so, um, so I've been on... The people who... Uh, Carved stone. The people who carved stone were masons, you say? Is that is that a fact? Masons carving stone? What's the world coming to? It's witchcraft. 
on assignments over oh. there, and one assignment I went on, God told me that he was going to expose the evil eye. So I was like, okay, what does that mean? So I... So this guy is getting messages from God. Let's... I want to recap what that message was. I've been on assignments over there, and one assignment I went on, God told me that he was going to expose the evil eye. So I was like, okay, what does that mean? So I go over there. God said he was going to expose the evil eye. The evil eye. That's a, that's a, that's one of the most common, uh, uh, occult beliefs. That's like universal around cultures was that, uh, certain, uh, Magical practitioners had the ability to uh, give the evil eye. And that would put a curse upon you. Yeah. I start walking and I start finding all these stakes, these engineering stakes in the ground with the evil eye on them, with the triangle. And I was like, oh, you, okay. you actually saw these wood stakes that were no, like. No, they're metal stakes. They're metal, okay. they're those engineering, the top of the engineering stake. Okay. And then. So he's talking about the symbol on the, the, he, like the head of a nail, the head of the spike, the stakes that were used, um, had a mason symbol on it. Because stone working was done by masons, but conspiracy. <laughs> and as I began to do my research more, I realized that the it was set up. Clasia, I want to be your favorite pink-haired nutter butter. To enshrine um, democracy or um, the Declaration of Independence, um, it, it was it was to enshrine or to give. Um, I don't know how you say a shrine, but a shrine is a place of worship. How do we worship our... Well, I mean, a shrine doesn't have to be a place of worship. It can be a place like remembrance or uh, reverence or anything like that. It doesn't, you don't have to worship. You don't have to believe in anything super... I used to have a Jim Morrison shrine uh, in my... Cause, just because I had a like a Jim Morrison, Morrison fetish when I was younger. Um, in my, I still have the stuff from it somewhere. Yeah. Our, our great thing we did with our government, right? And so that was the idea behind it. And so now the Freemasons went down and put a a tunnel in there or a cave in there. Um, I am the queen of the pink hair nutty butters. Woo! Thank you, guys. Oh, you are, uh, Marie, you're just a good witch. I'm like Cat Curse, the Wicked Witch. I get to be like Glinda the Good Witch. Aww. Um, and, have you been to the cave? Have you seen the cave? Well, I've seen the cave, but I've not been in it. They wouldn't let us go in it. I guess I guess no one can go in except certain people. They were going to build a presidential uh, library thing back up in there. Um, there's like a, a room that they were carving out, and they were going to build a... Uh, no, I shouldn't say presidential library. I was like, it was going to be like a... They were going to have like bronze statues of each, each of the presidents in there. Um, like all of them. There would be the, the, the four big heads, and then when you go down to the cave behind there, there was going to be bronze statues of each president, I believe. That's my understanding of what was originally the concept for it, but it got abandoned for whatever reasons. We can look into those reasons, but I'm sure that they involve Freemasons and uh, uh, the wrath of God. And the Native American uh, war spirits maybe will have... Um, some supernatural wonders and whatnot. That's that's how this stuff goes down, right? I mean, according to uh, the Mary Crowley show. So. And yes, I'm serious. We are going to get to supernatural wonders that took take place at uh, Mount Rushmore. We will get there. Basically, it was it was closed up, but um, that's what we're dealing with. And what the Lord revealed to me is that this. Mount Rushmore has a direct, direct ley line to Washington, D.C. And he said... Freaking ley lines! Yeah! I'm going to talk about ley lines soon. Don't you worry. They are going to... We, we are going to get there. We will get there. Oh, my gosh. Ley lines. So much to talk about in that topic. <laughs> Basically that. 
as we continue to work in prayer and do the work of the ministry, that God was going to break that connection. Because it's like... I actually liked Mickey Rourke in uh, Sin City, too. He's pretty good in that. In order to understand the spiritual realm of what we're facing, we have to realize that in order for the enemy to do anything, he needs the agreement of human beings. Like, in order to be empowered... Who keeps to knocking on their mic? the agreement of human beings. And oftentimes that comes in the form of an altar, an active altar that acts as a portal for demonic things. And so that's what we're dealing with. And people that are into that are brought into it because they think they're doing good, some of them. Um, they think they're doing the right thing. And then we have all kinds of people that are trying to get into Native practices, New Age religion. And that's like a hotbed for all that. And so when I go into the Black Hills, I really have to prepare myself because there's a lot of stuff going on. But oh I, just, my. I just know that God is doing something. Even Donald Trump. I don't even have to make any commentary on this. Just listen to what we're, we're hearing here. Uh, this is somebody making laws. This is somebody writing legislation that we're, that we're listening to go on about demonic portals and altars of altars for demonic forces to come through freaking uh the the black hills of south dakota and specifically uh those structures uh built or that were modified by uh by masonry and specifically the masonry around the uh mount rushmore construction i'm landing in the black in the black hills at mount rushmore july 4th when the governor Christie Nome put the message out that fireworks are returning to South Dakota, that was a prophetic word. And God spoke to me. He said, when Donald Trump's, you know what? Uh, South Dakota, unfortunately has a poverty problem, like a bad poverty problem, but God is like, you know what? They don't have much money, but let them have fireworks. You know, the, the hunger, I'm not going to worry about hunger. Let's, let's light up the sky with burning fragments of metal instead. That's what the children's need. Steps foot on this territory. He says, there's something that's going to be done as far as the constitution. It's him. It's out. Joe. Joe, stop tapping on the, on the table or whatever you're doing. It, it comes through your mic. It's going to bring a breakthrough. Yep. With the you can see his hand moving. And I kind of got the feeling that what we're really dealing with in that portal is communism. Okay, we're going to rewind. We'll go back 20 seconds. There we go. Being upheld. It's going to bring a breakthrough with the Constitution. And I kind of got the feeling that what we're really dealing with in that portal is communism. That witchcraft altar and those things that are happening in the Black Hills is what we're really dealing with is communism. 
It's the ideology and all the demonic entities and spirits behind that. Because that's what was brought on the native. <laughs> I'm going to choke myself here. Whew. Oh, what am I what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to watch this anymore? I can't stop. <sighs> There's a portal in the altar of Mount Rushmore. It's in a secret room behind Mount Rushmore. Is a witchcraft art altar that's also a Freemason altar, which is also a Christian uh, satanic altar, which is also a portal. And on the other side of that portal, through that portal, through that portal, it's just communism, a market system. There's a market system on the other side of that portal. <laughs> uh, uh, a market system uh, within us, uh, or that's constructed on a uh, classless, moneyless society. A, <laughs> a classless, moneyless society is, is through this portal. Uh, it, it, is like a, a Marx port is is Karl Marx on the other side of the portal? Like what? I I just I don't know. What do I do with this? What do I do with this information? These people are straight faces. People, and that territory belongs to many people, but it's not being she, honored. She didn't even crack a smile. She didn't even nothing. She kept her, she's a professional, I'll give you that, Miss Mary Cruelly. Doctor, sorry, Dr. Mary Cruelly. So what the enemy is doing is he's using all of that to try to subject all of America to this communist ideology because it's never been rectified. Um, but. Well, and let's go back really quick. So on July 3rd, when President Trump came and they had the fireworks, you were on the stage with President Trump and Governor Christie Noem. You asked you were supposed to have met with him, uh, and then he had to leave quickly. There was a lot of protests, I guess, um, further down the hill. Is that correct? Yeah, so I had gotten a series of dreams. Of <laughs> okay, he was supposed to meet. He was supposed to meet. <laughs> he was supposed to meet with uh, Donald Trump at this Freemason <laughs> portal. Oh, is that right, Aunt Jer? Too much Botox, is she can't smile. She does have very full lips. I will give her that. I don't know if it's natural or artificial, but they're very full. Me actually going in to talk to President Trump in his office. And the Lord kept giving me a message and um, for him concerning the Native people and like how we could move forward, basically. And how... The I think she's a like a doctor of divinity or something. Let me see. I'm gonna look her up. I'm not gonna get. I'm gonna give her a fair shake. Doctor Mary Cruelly. LinkedIn profile. Producer and host. I'm not trying to join LinkedIn. I'm trying. Damn it. God, that that he killed my throat laughing about that. Oh my gosh. Woo. Here, I'll look at her IMDB page. Yeah. Doesn't give me I'm not gonna speculate on what she's a doctor of. I'll just ignore it and just trust that she's being honest with me. The United States could help the tribes, you know, advance. And so right now the way the way that the relations between the United States in the tribes is more we are living a full-blown social socialistic society in the tribes and we have been you know it was the great experiment socialistic what is that even socialistic socialistic 
his political philosophy movement and movement encompassing a wide range of economic and social systems which are characterized by social ownership of the means of production. Okay, so well, that's just socialism. Okay, socialistic means relating to socialism. All right. I've never heard it using that concept of we were living in a socialistic society. It'd be a socialist society, I would think. I'm going to back up just a little bit. Um, a full-blown social socialistic society that you know, advance. And so right now, the way, the way that the relations between the United States and the tribes is more, we are living a full blown social socialistic society in the tribes. And we have been, you know, it was the great experiment. Um, and it's still ongoing. So I just believe like someone like Donald Trump with the business background, you know, with his face in Christ. With the failed business background, Donald Trump's probably a good, de a, a good, uh, de like his picture should be in the, the dictionary next to bad businessman. I mean, he's really bad at it. He's like never been, he's never had a successful business, right? Everything he does seems kind of falls on its face. Um, but he's never left holding the check because he has. He hires good lawyers, or at least he used to. He can't seem to get a good lawyer now. I just think someone like that would be a good person to figure out what we can do to get the people healthy off dependence and get strong economies built up in our tribes. Now, some people would say, Joe, well, yeah, but now there's many casinos on these lands, and a lot of these tribes are making a lot of money. Is you know so I've well I've there's seen... a hand, there's a handful of tribes that do make money off the casinos but the rest of the tribes don't they just make enough to pay their employees and break even. Well, that's not very socialistic then. If everybody's not making uh, or benefiting from the uh, the product of the labor that they're doing, yeah. Um, and so that's a very now, it just depends on where you live. If you live in California, one of those tribes, I mean, they'd probably make millions a month each tribal member. But you come out in the Dakotas, you don't have the population. How many how many farmers and people do we have to go to our casinos? So it's 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 not. I don't know. I live in rural or lived in rural Missouri, and there was a casino that did pretty good. Uh, it was on the river, but I'm, I'm not telling you how to run your tribe or anything i just I, casinos can make money in a rural setting people come from miles and miles around for a casino you can't look at one native american tribe or a group of native american tribe and try to figure out native america you cannot do it I think no i understand well let's do this because we only have about 15 minutes left so the, the the significance of when president trump came and he had to leave before you were able to, to talk with him. But let's talk about, you know, the um, apostolic pastor, tribal leader, Gabriel Medicine Eagle, that he died that day right yeah. on the ground. So tell that story about what okay, happened. First, I want to start by sharing that Gabe Medicine Eagle was one of the first tribal leaders to get the covenant with Israel uh, passed by the tribe, and he took it over. The covenant of Israel. Israel. And so those were the beginnings of kind of his apostolic work he was doing. Um, well, I'm not going to follow this uh, person's passing because there's another thing I wanted to talk about before with this channel before we pop out a creation watch. So stick around with me. We're going to keep on trucking. This is another interview. And we're going to watch this one from the beginning. We're going to watch the whole thing. Now, I don't know about watching her intro. There we go. Hi, everybody. Dr. Mary Crowley here for Now is the Time. I've got a very important broadcast today with as Oh, her last name was Crowley. That's just delicious. <laughs> GNN. In fact, we were all just in Mount Rushmore a few weeks ago, and we're going to be talking about that and some of the significant things that shifted in the atmosphere, and we're actually going to roll in a picture of Mount Rushmore with a very interesting little cloud that's right over the four presidents. 
So anyway, before we do that, one of the sponsors of the event we did in South Dakota is QE Strong. Let's roll that commercial now, please. QE Strong. Effect wipes out pain and allergies. I'm kind of interested. In less than 30 seconds with zero drugs. Pastor Dave and hundreds of others have experienced the quantum effect for themselves. The quantum Besides effect. By scientific research and rigorous lab testing. Which they will not cite. Quantum is simply about two things. One, intentions. As a man thinketh, so he is. And two, renewing your mind with the word of God. Only QE Strong encodes key intentions and Bible verses about healing onto the small patch. You simply place it on your body each day. There's Bible verses. This prayer guide. <clears throat> there are Bible verses on these patches. Bible verses on patches. Holy crap. This is this is the craziest stuff I've ever... Oh my gosh. <sighs> this this is this the real life? I'd read out loud a positive intention and one or two Bible verses about healing each day. The patch provides the touch, and the prayer guide uses your sight, speech, and hearing to relieve pain and allergy symptoms with the senses God gave you. It even works for people who have suffered decades of chronic symptoms. Are you ready to experience the quantum? Vague quantum or. Uh, quant uh, uh, Quantum energy with vague symptoms, allergy and pain. Mm. Oh my gosh, they have Bible verses on them. <clears throat> you stick them on. And then uh, you read your little booklet of Bible verses. This is a real product. And it's not, uh, it's not a coincidence that it's got the Q as its symbol. Are there more products like this? Hell, I think I should add a whole segment to my show about these these products that are being sold. My goodness. In effect, go to qestrong.com forward slash Mary. I am so glad I did not skip the advertisement. Holy moly. Yes, qestrong.com, a lot of people not only with pain, but allergy, allergy suffers. It's really been helping tremendously. qestrong.com and do you hear the Trumpism tremendously? Put in my promo code, which is Mary, right in the middle of America, M E R I. Well, anyway, SG, it's good to good to have you on the show today. You were just such a great addition to the event that we had in Mount Rushmore, June second and third. Interestingly, tomorrow will be, uh, you know, June twenty third. Today being the twenty second. So but, this is from a couple uh, weeks back. Know, we're in a very significant shift, and a lot of things are happening. But, uh, you know, in, in Mount Rushmore, there were some significant things that happened. Um, what do you feel happened and occurred uh, in Mount Rushmore a few weeks ago, SG? Well, you know, at the end of the day, it was a beautiful um, congregation of patriots coming together and realizing that, you know, we may have some. I don't, uh, in God's seat, I don't think you have to uh, uh, agree or disagree with socialism to uh, to, to know that there's no socialism beyond be, through a demonic portal in the Black Hills, of South Dakota. I think we can we can both agree on that without even disagree without even having to discuss social, what socialism is at all. That it doesn't exist through a magical portal. It's a mar uh, yeah. S socialism is not is not uh, is not something that that can that is like a tangible substance that can come through a portal. Social differences we may have small. Um, differing interpretations of details that are here and there, but the core of who we are as we the people is the same, um, you know, and acknowledging their power in God and the fact that they are sort of God's vessel and God's arm here in this world, right, to affect that change and to change things for the good. Um, what was amazing about that whole event was that you had such a broad perspective of uh, resource offered as well as a massive amount of um, you know, coming togetherness as a group and doing things as sort of, you know, one body of Christ, right? And that's the example, I think, that we're all supposed to adhere to at the, to the best of our ability and move forward. So at the end of the day, you know, the amount of love and compassion, but also firmness of passion and firmness of drive that was expressed by not only, you know, the individuals that came and taught and shared and things like that, but more so than anything, the audience members this is so full of platitudes. Are you guys keeping up with this? Um, was really quite flooring. 
Well, you know, when SG came, there was a lot of, uh, you know, we had Louis that. Brunson that came at the last minute. Speed it up 107, a little bit. you know, Ashley had an emergency. He did actually get, came in on Zoom. And, uh, you know, we had Donna Rigney, Manuel Johnson, Joe Donnell. I mean, we had some powerful people. And then I screened my film, Freedom Cry Sex Trafficking in America, which I am down in Florida right now. And this coming Saturday, June 24th, I will be in, you know, Fort Lauderdale. We are screening it at the uh, First Baptist Church there in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. It is actually on my website, marycarly.com. Um, we'll maybe pull that up later, but it'll be at 6.30 at night. I have a number of panelists coming in, but Tara Lee Rodas, who is actually the whistleblower, the HHS whistleblower that um, was working with these unaccompanied minors, uh, and she saw the corruption that was going on right into the Biden administration, and she eventually, uh, they walked her off. I just interviewed her a few days ago, um, SG. They walked her off, and oh, she eventually like some, had to uh, project, project Veritas. Some pizza, pizza gate stuff. That, and... that she actually uh, told us, mm. and so she's flying in from Virginia and is going to be part of that panel. We've got some amazing people on the panel. But let's get back to Mount Rushmore just briefly before we yeah, get Yeah, that's what I want to get back things. for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, on Sunday, we all went down to Mount Rushmore, and uh, I knew that God had told me that we were supposed to go down there, and uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's pretty incredible. They actually have a stage and there's a flagpole with a flag. And, and uh, we all met it too and walked down to the stage. And uh, we were all in a circle. There's about 50 of us, SG being one of them and Donna Rigney and a number of us. And we prayed and we, you know, we, uh, you know, we sang the Star Spangled Banner. We were blowing shofars. We were, um, and then I had read a dream. Uh, Donna Rigney had come on my podcast, you know, sometime in April and I interviewed her and she said to me, um, SG, that oftentimes God will send her to areas of the country that God <laughs> will use her to open a portal. A portal <clears throat> is an area over a region that oftentimes, you know, the democracy now we got to talk about portals some more. Monic realm will get control over, and you know it's up to the, the body of Christ to come and take authority and unity and community and open it. So when we were talking on this this broadcast, um, SG in, in April, a woman ended up sending her an email named Diane from Canada, and uh, I read that whole email. Pretty much was saying that she was in this dream, and there was these two people in the front seat with white hoodies. She then realized that they were angels, and and she said she ended up they were kind of in this car. It seemed like more of a hovercraft type of a car, and they came. So she dreamed about being in a hovercraft with angels. I have wild dreams too, lady. Came up to this um, monument or a, you know a, a rock structure. She realized that it was the um, you know it was the Mount Rushmore, and she saw George Washington. And to the left of George Washington was Jesus. Only he was the Lion of Judah. And then to the right of Abraham Lincoln was President Donald Trump in the rock. So bottom line is <laughs> Trump's up on Mount Rushmore, guys. <laughs> right there next to Lincoln. I'm sure he thinks he belongs there. I'm sure he thinks that you know be in the the only president's ever been indicted twice, impeached twice. Yeah. <laughs> you no know, email she sent us, but at the end of it, she He belongs on Mount Rushmore, sure. She said, I feel that you guys, what you're doing there is going to be very significant and that something really good is going to happen. So I read that. And so it's so interesting because the very next day, Donna Rigney, um, she literally called me. She said, Mary, you wouldn't believe it. I ran into some people. Her and her husband, Jack, ended up doing a tour. She ran into a man who tried to find us on Sunday, but I guess he missed us. And he was walking around the top of the, the structure, like, you know, there's kind of a circular uh, sidewalk that goes around it. And he heard some singing of the Star Spangled Banner. And when he looked down, he said he saw us. And then he took a picture. And when he took the picture and posted it on Facebook, people started telling him that what he they saw was President mm -hmm. Trump in the clouds. So let's pick that up on the <laughs> screen right now, if we can, because it's pretty amazing. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're here for. Ready? Amazing when you see this uh, picture. <laughs> it does look like President Trump. Um, and I know you shared it too, right? Um, SG? I did actually. I was <laughs> profoundly surprised at the resemblance when compared alongside a more uh, serious candor, um, you know, a more contemplative President Trump. Trump's in the um, clouds? You know, it was, it was sufficient enough for me to just Hang be convinced, convinced, excuse me, that at the end of the day, you know, the source of all creation that is God is going to give us these signs, right? The book tells us that we have signs and wonders to go by and that we mark different points along the way in the seasons and things like that by what comes in the heavens. And so we know that that is a message board of sorts. I mean, that's pretty well established. And at the end of the day, um, I think some things are more visible than others, but when it's not much of a stretch and you can actually see the resemblance in that particular moment, I mean, that's that's the statistical anomaly here that we really have is the fact that such a cloud should be present at the exact moment that we were out actually, you know, giving... <laughs> Such a cloud would be present. Such a cloud would be present, maybe. <laughs> uh, homage and, and support and faith to being one nation under God. Show it already! Um, what I particularly liked about that entire ceremony was not only the expression of worship, but also the expression of unity with the native tribes and the native peoples. Um, sort of understanding that, you know, events have passed. The things of the past are the things of the past, and we are one people now. Um, and we have to take back what is now rightfully all of our land from this power structure that's been around the world, right? And so we know that President Trump has been on board with that for... Uh, really, you know, since he came down the escalator, he was inaugurated with the military behind him, which was, you know, a very powerful display of uh, solidarity and I think in some respects a message. Um, so to have that sort of event occur while we were there on that particular day in that time and space, it's, it's just very unlikely. And I'm sorry, but I'm not one, you know, married to believe in coincidences. Well, we were trying to pull it up on the screen. I don't know what happened. Uh, if you can get it up there, Marshall. Uh, there, there we go. Is. There it is. 
uh, you can see the picture is actually circled. And it, it when, when they showed it to me, I was like amazed because on my Facebook page, right next to this, you show the actual picture of <laughs> President Trump that looks just like this. And um, it was the only cloud in the sky. And uh, whether you believe it or not, I, I think it's striking to, to be in a picture of President Trump. And you know, there's some of you listening or watching, we don't put Trump up, we're not idolizing President Trump. He's just a man that um, I, I believe has stood for the country. He's not perfect. He's made some you know, decisions that, you know, in the past, in particular about the jab, when he initially started telling people, you know, he wasn't forcing people. He said, you know, you should take it. If the jab, by the way, is uh, nutter butter talk for uh, the COVID-19 vaccinations. Actually, all of them, like the whole myriad of them are called the jab. You want. So, you know, some people are questioning that. But in the meantime, we know that President Trump clearly wants to see our country uh, in the border shut down and everything like that. <laughs> we're what we're Trump wants to see the border shut down, but you're talking about getting messages from Canada, my dear. Um, I don't know. This doesn't look like Trump to me. It looks like uh, the thing from um, from the Fantastic Four, like uh, Ben Graham, especially with that that big uh, unibrow thing you've got going on. We're seeing. So let's take that off the screen, Marshall. So anyway, that was amazing, regardless, SG. Well, and another thing that was so great, because Joe Donnell, <coughs> excuse me, Joe Donnell, Donnell, who was actually there as well, and he's one of the state, excuse me, <coughs> something in my throat. He was one of the state legislators that's um, working with Governor Christy Nome, and um, he actually told me, he said, you know, when President Trump came there in 2020, on July 3rd, there was a man named Gabriel Medicine Eagle that had, was, you know, when he was younger, he was all set to be a medicine man uh, for the, the tribes, you know, for the Native Americans. And then he ended up. This was the same guy they were just talking about. I guess I'm, I meant to see this. The the, the um, divine Trump cloud entity is guiding me to to talk about, to listen to them talk about this medicine eagle guy. I mean, a Christian at a revival. And so they realized that, you know, he has a calling his life to be a pastor. So this particular <clears throat> gentleman did a lot around the world globally, and in particular with Israel and building structure between South Dakota, the tribes and you know, different government officials and things around the world globally. And um, he was there. And Joe said he was about 10 feet away from Gabriel Medicine Eagle when he saw him fall to the ground and collapse. And uh, he was going to run over there and try to resuscitate him. And he heard the Spirit of God say, no, no, don't do it. I've taken him. Well, they had to wait. I guess there's protocols when a president leaves. Um, they have to wait 45 minutes before he, but he can come in the airspace or whatever. And so when they finally removed Gabriel Medicine Eagle's body. Joe so this guy died on the ground. And they said not in people... I guess didn't come help him because they thought that God said that he was taking him. They heard God say that. And then nobody could come in to try to administer first aid or to resuscitate the gentleman until, or because Trump was there and it meant that nobody could fly in. They couldn't fly in a helicopter to get the guy out or anything like that. I don't know. This sounds pretty awful to me. Joe said he was standing right there. There was a lightning bolt that hit the exact spot where his body had been. And then simultaneously, SG, around Mount Rushmore, these lightning bolts started hitting and breaking out of these little fires where the lightning bolts hit. And then <clears throat> all of a sudden there were several fires and then this rain came and put it all out. It was significant that um, Gabriel had said earlier in the day when he did a Facebook Live that he had seen everything that he needed to. And I believe that this uh, man really was a profound, uh, he did something profound for the Native people. So that Mount Rushmore was a very sacred rock for the Native American people. And when, the, I guess they're Freemasons that both that they put four American presidents. So it's hard to tell, are these, are these people like four? Mount Rushmore, or are they against Mount Rushmore? I can't. But, you know, what can I say? All I know is that God significantly did something when we were there that day, including the sign um, in the clouds above Mount Rushmore. And Joe said that in the spirit realm, they say that the Black Hills SG is the heart. And then when you look at it from an aerial perspective and the trees are blowing, it looks like a beating heart. So um, he said that we shifted something in the atmosphere. A portal was opened and it was going to have significant effects around the world. So I believe that you coming and many of the other ones that came. A portal opened above Mount Rushmore now. A new portal, not the demonic one, a Trump one, a Trump portal. It was very significant to open the heavens like God arise. So thank you for coming. We're looking, we're doing another one, you guys. Um, we're actually putting the flyer together. SG is going to let us know if he can come. But Juan has confirmed that he's going to come. And anybody who came to Mount Rushmore, um, this event in Chicago, is we're not going to charge, but we are going to have a VIP, which is $77 to meet some of the speakers. We have special seating. But anybody who paid for VIP in the Mount Rushmore area. You all should send me there. Send me to this event. <clears throat> in disguise, I'll go and record. We'll be able to come and not have to pay. It will be the rain check I talked about. Um, in Mount Rushmore. So we'll let you know more about that. So mark your calendars, um, August 18th and 19th. It will be in uh, Chicago and uh, we'll let you know more about that and if SG can come as well. So anyway, so there's a lot going on right now, SG, around the, the globe in particular. All right, we're going to end that there. So this was 
This was uh, Now is the Time with, with Mary Crowley. So if you like me covering this, uh, let me know in the comments down below. This is a new, uh, new individual that we haven't covered before. So if you found this entertaining, I about laughed my ass off. I would think I've laughed that hard on Life in the Hive in a long, long time. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, that you got a kick out of this too and that uh, you enjoy what I do here in the Hive. So Creation Watch will cover all kinds of, uh, of wild notions, including things like this. And uh, we don't just focus on... on Christianity, of course, we do other topics as well. We've covered uh, uh, Hindu and uh, our, Hind our what they call it, Vedic science. We've covered uh, Islamic science. We've covered creation science, of course, young earth creationists, uh, Catholic stuff. We, we, we're, we're equal opportunity here. If you have a wild idea about how the, what the nature of the universe is that I think differs with reality, then I'm, then I'm welcome it to be debunked right here on Live from the Hive and Creation Watch. So thank you very much for sticking with me. Uh, please remember to come back Friday night for Cryptic Corner and then join us live on Saturday morning with Live from the Hive. And you can be part of this cool audience over here in this general section who's been popping up. And there you go. There they are right there. Uh, so, yep, well... Uh, Please remember to be kind, take care, and we will see you next time. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. On our way to work one morning, down the path, along the lake, a tender hearted woman saw a poor, half frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. The boy. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a big beautiful wall. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, oh heaven, you wouldn't have done. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying, Snake gave her a vicious 